But first, Ipswich has marked one year since devastating floods swept through the area. More than 8,500 homes and businesses were affected. Lisa Rolls is in Ipswich where a remembrance ceremony is about to take place. And Lisa, this city began its fight back right from day one. Bill, it certainly did, and the people here in Ipswich are still fighting on. There are some residents who are still not back in their homes, but today it was about remembering. It was about recognising that spirit of courage and resilience that got them through. Now, earlier this morning, there was a memorial service held in Goodna, and in a very short while, there'll be another, another one held here in the heart of Ipswich, right on the bank of the Bremer River, which helped cause all of that damage. Now, we have seen many memorial services in the past few days. We've seen a lot of tears and a lot of people who are still in a lot of pain, but... Today, at least, we did see some laughter. Just like during the flood recovery, it took all levels of government pulling together to unveil this giant flood monument in Ipswich. But on a day dedicated to honouring the resilience of flood victims, there was no way they were going to give up. It's called the Pillar of Courage. The yellow section on the marker shows how high the water was here last year. The very top is the peak of the 1863 floods. A lot more people call it home. A lot of businesses that are here weren't here in those times and many of those can be seen right here behind me. And I have to say, when I went through these suburbs, it was one of the very few times that I felt threatened to be overwhelmed by what was happening to us because the scale of it was simply so big. Hundreds of flood victims and those who came to their aid attended the commemorative service. Storybook to teach those yet to come. Like the marks on a doorway that chart a child's growth, it records goodness, endurance and resolve. Goodna and Ipswich were two of the hardest hit areas and that's still very clear here today. Just metres from where the ceremony was held, there are still empty flood damaged buildings. Protesters were told to leave, but with so many people still needing help, the mayor had insurance companies in his sights. After, you know, seven days, if I don't pay, they will ring me up and say, we're going to cancel your policy. Yet they can take months and months and months to get those dollars out to those needed people. But as he'd said, today was about remembering and being proud. natural disaster to become better neighbours. Well, I can tell you that's what's happened. And while there are many memories they will hold on to, there is one they're happy to forget. You know, because I haven't been able to look at another sausage. And Mayor Paul Pasali joins me now live. And Paul, you must be very happy with how the city's responded. Oh, fantastic. Look, it's just great to see when your city's hit with a natural disaster. It's not the damage, but it's the way you respond. And the people have just been so fantastic with strength, resilience, and that care. It came from all over South East Queensland, so boundaries were broken down. It was, I can't say how proud I am of the city, and um, you know, we're proud to be part of a great solution in South East Queensland. Will tonight bring closure, or will tonight be a tough night? No, tonight is about reflecting on the last 12 months, but at the same time recognising the good but also to let people know out there that they're not alone because there's still a lot of people need to get into their houses and have their own closure. So it's about um, supporting people who have been through a very, very tough time. And some tough words too today for the insurance companies. Well, the insurance companies have got a lot to answer for. You know, look, they, they expect their premiums to be paid very quickly yet they can delay the signs. And everywhere I go, people's insurance policies are doubled and tripled. You know, that's not on. That's not Australian. And what we really need is someone to take a close look at this and make sure the insurance companies are part of this great country. Thank you, Paul. I know you've got a very important ceremony to get to, so we'll let you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, it takes money to help people get back on their feet, and so far $280 million has been donated to the Premier's Relief Fund, and the last of that was handed out just last week. Ian Sorovsky has spent the past 12 months slowly rebuilding his Goodna home. This had to be totally rebuilt, and uh, a lot of effort and a lot of uh, resources have gone into, into this. The task was made a little easier by friends and some money from strangers through the Premier's Relief Fund. Well, all these ceilings, ceilings and walls have all been uh, sanded down, painted and uh, that sort of stuff. The retiree is just one of 40,000 disaster victims given a helping hand by the $280 million donated by individuals, corporations and foreign governments. But the rate at which the money went to victims was criticised even by the Premier herself. 
I am not happy with the speed with which it's happening. The man in charge of the distribution defends the job he did. And if we had rushed out and just pushed money out willy-nilly, those people, many of whom were really traumatised by their experience, would have got nothing. After three rounds of payments, $22 million left over was given to St Vincent de Paul to distribute. The last of the money was handed over to them just last week. It was always a challenge to try and m match up the need that was out there, the needs that were growing, and of course we could only distribute the dollars that we had at any one time. Ian, however, has no complaints. I was grateful for whatever I could receive, so, so I'm happy about that. He still has plenty more work to do, but he'll get there eventually. Summer Burke, 10 News. Well, as Ipswich marks the anniversary of the floods, there was a sign that perhaps the city's fortunes are changing. And Lisa, a local family has had an incredible stroke of luck that was born out of wanting to help a flood-affected business. Yeah, Georgie, this could not have come at a better time. Last night, a Brassel family won $5 million in the Oslotto draw. Now, where this story gets really interesting is that they bought that ticket from a news agency in Brassel which had been flooded. Now, they were flood victims themselves, so they thought they'd go along and help this business get back on its feet. And we spoke to the news agency owner this morning, and he's very happy that he was able to help another flood victim. The 11th of January last year was the day we flooded completely. The 11th of January this year and we've got a really good smile on somebody's face. So uh, yeah, it was a great feeling. Georgie, it's certainly nice to see people smiling. Now I'll be back in a little while when the ceremony gets underway here and bring you all the latest. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Lisa Rolls in Ipswich. And Leonie Mellor is at the landmark Regatta Hotel in Brisbane, which is also marking the flood anniversary. And Leonie, it's been a year, but surprisingly, the regatta is still not back to its former glory. No, Georgie, it's not. In fact, it's only operating at about a quarter of its capacity and won't be opening further until March. Still, the operators are looking forward and are marking this one-year anniversary by donating one dollar of every draft beer sold to the SES. The people they say are the unsung heroes of January's floods. Now, that day, about a metre of water came through here, pretty much destroying downstairs and the cellar. Um, it's going to be a long road to recovery, but it's nothing this old lady hasn't seen before and uh, with the rebuild the owners have decided to give her a much needed facelift. We were taken on a tour earlier today to see where this latest transformation is at. The regatta has seen most things in her 130 plus years. January's floods just another notch on the veranda post. And the water was probably about that height there. Construction crews are still her main patrons. Her heritage value means it's a long, slow process. But with the repairs will come a new look. They want her to tell a story. If only her walls could talk. I think it's trying to tie the heritage in a little bit more and, and create, bring some soul into the pub. The front will be female friendly with plans to install the Merle Thornton bar. In 1965, the mother of actress Sigrid Thornton chained herself to the front bar to protest against a ban on women. And I think uh, five years later the, the government said yes, well now women can be treated equally in a hotel, they can, they can drink in the front bar. The smoker's pit out the back will go to make way for a barley-style beer garden with retractable roof. The cellar, which bore the brunt of the damage, will become a lounge area with quirky bars. One year on, they're looking forward and raising their glasses to the SES volunteers who helped. I just think it's, they're the unsung heroes, I suppose. They're, they're there, they're, whenever, we're, whenever we've got a natural disaster or people need help, they're always there. They'll donate one dollar from each draft beer bought. We can all drink to that. Leonie Mellor, 10 News.